and seek his wonderful face. He is in us. We are but blood bought property of the Lord. I want to share something so simple at the same time. It's going to be so clear, particularly in the time we're living in. Death is knocking the doors of the people all over the world. People are frightened. It's not ordinary time we are living in. And I believe people want to hear good news. That's why I believe the Lord laid on my heart good news. Good news. And what's the good news? Sin's sting is taken out. That's good news. Sin's sting is taken out. So, good news is it. Believe and be free. Believe and be free. That's very simple. How? You can ask me and uh, I will plead with you. Stick with us. Listen very carefully. What? Only the Spirit of God can reveal to us. So what we are looking for is not uh, some information, but a revelation. A revelation. And uh, this topic is very, very attractive to me. I believe it will be attractive to everybody. Good news. Sin sting is taken out. That is a historical fact. I'm simply speaking a statement of fact. This is a statement of fact. When I say sin sting is taken out, it is a historical fact. It is a statement of fact. So, so what we need to do, we will try to uh, elaborate a bit, we will try to open it. So believe and be free. Today, the verse I'm going to lay before you, uh, let me read it. And then since we are going to talk about the sting, uh, I would like some scientific uh, facts about the sting. And uh, I was speaking to someone who had studied, and Brother Ricardo has studied about the bees and the sting and what happens when the bee stings someone. Some of you uh, might know already, but uh, I'm going to let him uh, state the facts about the sting, but let's read the scripture that we are going to open before us today. The scripture is taken from John chapter 8 and verse 31 and 32. This is a situation, uh, this is uh, where Jesus is meeting some believer and uh, he declares another statement of fact, very powerful statement of fact. Then said Jesus, John 8, verse 31, if you've got your Bible, God's people, open it and read with me. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him. You remember very few were who believed in him. Many have their eyes stuck on the scripture. I say stuck on the scripture. They were not looking at the Lord. They missed him a big time. We know that first disciples were Jewish, first church was Jewish, and according to my understanding of history, for the, law, for the seven to ten year, they were not even speaking to other people. Until Peter went to the house of Cornelius by a vision that God gave him, and there the first Gentile out of the Jewish religion were openly 
converted and he came to Jerusalem and then he explained to them. First, they were a bit, uh, a bit upset with him and they said, you went to be with the Gentiles. You're not supposed to be in the house. You're not supposed to be eating with them. And then he said, hold your guns. I have got something to say to you. He said, these six uh, men were with me and I was, uh, I was there by vision that the Lord gave me and they heard me and uh, we saw them receiving the Holy Spirit exactly the way we received the, the day of Pentecost. And then <laughs> I questioned myself, who am I, who am I to stop them from being baptized in water who have received the Holy Spirit exactly the way we did. So this is the history of the first church. First seven to ten years, they would not speak to, I'm not sure about this, but between the seven to ten years, they will not talk to anyone. You, you remember that? Nobody had got covenant. And then Jesus came and he said, go into all the world. But they were happy with the words that Jesus told them. I'm sent only to the... Uh, to the, the sheep of the house of Israel, and they liked it. They liked this verse, and so they stuck with this word. But after he finished the work, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone, teaching them all, and uh, teaching them my teaching to them, and uh, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I'm reading so that it will be very clear. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, believing or, get, or being born uh, to our understanding is the first step. When you begin to see it as a goal, then you simply are born again and stuck, or saved or stuck, we say. And... Uh, Irony is that majority of the church is saved and stuck. They do not grow. Seed is sown and the seed remains in the seed form. Jesus Christ comes in their spirit as a seed, but seed stays in the seed form. It doesn't grow. Then verse 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You will be free. So the good news, the message simply is good news. It says sin sting is taken out. So believe and be free. And this applies to what happens when a bee stings. And I'm going to be quiet for a little while. And I'm going to uh, request my brother Ricardo to tell us uh, show, in a short manner what happens with the bee and uh, the history of the sting. And it exactly is the way we see in the scripture. Brother Ricardo, please speak to us about some scientific fact so that everybody on the YouTube and everywhere they hear, they may see and rejoice. What has happened after Jesus died on the cross? Go on. Good morning, church. This, uh, let me <laughs> show this as well. When a bee stings, sadly, all his internal things are being um, built into the sting. So once and the... the, the the um, once he stings and he tried to separate himself so he can't separate because when he separates the sting stays on the skin and when he pulls himself out all his innards comes out so he dies from there so this is what happens when they sting because the 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 uh, the, the venom sac is is built just on the sting and everything is innards, everything is connected together. So uh, once he stings, he dies and the, the, the pain stays there for about uh, 
<laughs> the person's uh, sensitivity between 10 to 15 minutes and some people about an hour and that some they can really get infected as well so it's uh, sadly the bee dies after his first thing so <laughs> he loses protection sadly. praise the lord brother ricardo uh, it has been wonderful demonstration and uh, a wonderful statement of fact jesus was tongue by the devil he thought i have finished him up and uh, it was the greatest mistake that the devil has ever made in many mistakes the first mistake he made when he didn't want to stay Lucifer, he chose to be Satan. God doesn't make junk, he didn't make him Satan, he didn't make him devil, but he wanted to exercise his own will. He wanted to exercise his own self. And the self brought him to a terrible state from an anointed cherub he simply became a Satan. God didn't make a Satan. God didn't make devil. God is a good God. He makes good thing, junk he doesn't make. And you can read about it in uh, Ezekiel chapter 28. And you can also read about his uh, boasting in Isaiah 14. God's people, this is a fact. Bible is. Uh, more accurate than scientific fact is precise for those who are willing to know, for those who are willing to receive, but those who want to stick to their old religion, those who want to stick to their ideas, for them the thing is the same. We have seen in the image that is all his inner thing came out and she was dead. The bee is dead. About the sting, Bible speaks very clearly. Uh, let me read it. Devil made a mistake. And I tell you, all the demons and all the devils and big general that are with him, of course, one third of the angel fell with him. They were a bit cross with him. Look what you have done. This life, we were fighting only with one. Now we have got to fight this life, a life in millions of people. Millions will believe when we and the devil say, look, I'm going to make sure they don't talk about the life. I'm going to make sure that they will talk about religion. I'm going to make sure that they will be caught up with their own self-life. They will be captured or they will be wrapped up in their self. And do you know what? If you're wrapped up in my if I'm wrapped up in self, it makes a very ins insignificant package. It's not a package worth looking at. So God's people in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we read about this. What Brother uh, Ricardo has expressed so beautifully about the sting. I remember a story. There was a, a man uh, and his brother standing together and uh, B uh, landed on the elder brother and uh, it, it stung him. And then B, you know, and he was, of course, in a pain and in agony. It's a very terrible thing. Uh, my son was stung, who was in Florida, he was stung, and he told it's not a good experience. And then it landed on the younger brother. And it landed on the younger brother, and he also began to cry and feel as he is in pain. And the elder brother told him, stop crying. When he knew about what we have heard from Brother Ricardo, he said, once the bee has tongue, it's lost, it's sting. Why are you crying? It's not going to harm you. It has harmed me and the bee has left his sting in me. God's people, this is exactly what happened. Jesus took the sting. Sting has been taken out. And uh, 
Apostle Paul speaks about it in a very beautiful manner. Listen to this, how he spoke uh, about this and revealed it. Uh, second, 1 Corinthians, and it is chapter 2, and I'm going to read from verse, uh, verse 7. Exactly the same story is so beautiful. I don't know why people don't understand the sacrifice of Jesus. I don't know why they don't understand his atonement, his one man to wear the hymn. Oh, God's people, today I don't think anyone will have some misunderstanding. They will understand and they will commit their life to the Lord. They will come to, they will come to the Lord. And in fact, they will say, Lord, I receive you in my heart. That's what's going to happen. Do you believe it? I can see smile at your face. We are going to believe that people will understand this fact today. So. Apostle Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says in chapter 2, verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. What Brother Ricardo was saying is a kind of mystery. Once the beast stings a man, is dead. is no more alive. And the devil made a big mistake to sting the Lord of glory. The king of kings. Of course, he hasn't got that much wisdom. Uh, here is the wisdom in personification. It was in the plan of God for man. Irony is many people have not accepted this plan of God. They reject the plan of God and they have chosen to pay for their own sin. That's what they've done. Every religious person have chosen to pay for their own sin. And I've got bad news. And the bad news is all eternity in hell will not be able to pay for a single sin. And particularly the sin that was committed in the Garden of Eden. God's people, they're wasting their time. And if nobody reaches them, and if they do not hear the gospel, they will end up in a shocking place. And that place is hell and that is forever. You know, Jesus spoke more about hell than heaven. You count it. You count it. Some people think there is no hell. And that is their fantasy thinking. They're, they're living in a cuckoo land. And some people say they live in la-la land. They don't know what they're saying. They're thinking that hell is not. It's just like... A, uh, I have heard this that when a, a pigeon sees a, a cat very close to it, it closes its eye because the wisdom that uh, <laughs> the pigeon has is that by closing my eye, I'm hidden. Is he hidden? It's taken up by the, it becomes this meal. God's people, that's what many people are doing. They're hiding behind their. Uh, behind the tree of the religion. Some people like Zacchaeus are sitting on the tree and the Lord speaking to them today. Come down. I want to come in you. I want to come in your house. I want to live in you. I want to establish your kingdom. Will you please uh, say yes to him? If you say yes to him, you will be saved from eternal shocking hell where the fire will not be quenched and where the where the where the sting of the devil will be stinging all the time let's let's finish it please but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the world into our, unto our glory jesus christ in you is written in colossians chapter 1 verse 27 Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what he's talking about it here. And then it says, verse 8, that's what the devil did, that mistake he made. And he will be sorry for all eternity that he did it. Because he brought Christ into millions of people's spirit. Man was spirit. His spirit was dead. And Bible says, by the sacrifice of Jesus, the spirit of man is quickened when the spirit of man is quickened and he lets jesus in 
He comes in his spirit to establish his kingdom and he takes care of the sin question and of uh, sin nature. He can handle it all right, God's people. I can guarantee you that. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is not your work. And men are trying to overcome sin. The more they try to overcome sin, the more they get entangled into it. If only they will have wisdom and say, Lord, I have tried all my life. I will let you deal with my soul. I will let you deal with my flesh. I will let you handle all this. Oh, God's people, I tell you, he will do it gloriously. He will do it wonderfully. But for that, you have to submit. You have to yield. Yielding is your part. He has done the work. Good news is the work has been done. Praise and glory. be to And the work has been done completely because that's what he, uh, that's what the triumphant cry of the Lord was from the cross. It is finished. It is finished. The work of salvation is finished. The sin is not imputed to anyone in the world. You say, well, are you trying to preach that it's a universal salvation? No, sir. Not in a million, million times. No, no. They have to come to the Lord. They have to acknowledge that he paid the penalty for their sin. Then, if they believe that he has taken the the sting out of the devil, then of course they can be saved. So, which none of the princes of this world knew. He didn't know that. He did not know that. That's what we need to know. For had they known it, had they known it, that means the devil and the demons and all the principalities and the power, had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If the devil would know that the life of Christ will come to live in man by the sacrifice of Jesus, he will quicken the spirit. He will kill anyone who will try to kill Jesus. But he didn't know that. Of course, he, did. he didn't. Listen very carefully. This is what happened. If devil would know that the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ will set the prisoner free. I tell you, he will kill anyone who will try to kill Jesus. But he didn't know that. And Jesus gave his life himself. And do you know what he gave? It was not the life that is called Zoe. It's not divine life. Divine life doesn't die, you know that? Some people foolishly try to question, did God die on the cross? Oh, my, my friend, you are so innocent. He had a divine life. And divine life is simply give it to the Father. Father, into hand, into thy hand, I give my spirit. What, what died then? You must read it, verse 11, chapter, chapter 10 of John. And verse 10, the word is Zoe. I have come so that they might have life and have it in abundance. The word for life there is Zoe, Z-O-E. And when you come, he, he says, I give my life. And that is a suke. Two words used by the Holy Spirit. There are two words for life. And uh, many people do not know the distinction between suke and Zoe. Zoe is in life. God's given. So devil didn't know that. And about the sting. Let's read about the sting. We have heard about that. I tell you this message. Uh, our brother has elaborated so beautifully. It uh, uh, will be understood by anyone. No one will be able to complain. I didn't understand the message. No, sir. That excuse is taken out of your life. That excuse is taken out. You have received in its simplicity. Now, there's another danger. Some people stumble over the simplicity. That's another problem. But we pray that they will not stumble over the simplicity of this message. But they will surrender to the Lord. And they will accept what he did on the cross. It has been done. 
problem with people, or particularly the religious people, is they try to be human doing. Actually, they should be human being. We are human being, but religious people try to be human doing. They think that their good deeds will save them. They need to know what the scripture says in Isaiah 64 and verse 6. Our good deeds are like filthy rags. David says that I was conceived in the womb of my mother in sin. Psalm 53 says that God looked from heaven to see if there is any good. There is none. Psalm 14 as well speaks about. So there is there's a lot of proof in the scripture that we are born naturally with sin nature. We sin because we have got sin nature. Sin has stung everybody. Let's read this verse because we saw the scientific proof and now here is what the scripture uses the same thing and the message of course we have got is good news is sin sting is taken out so believe and be free free from what free from yourself free from the law of sin and death we'll come to that as well uh, but you will be wondering this man is making this message so simple today well, I'm not doing it. It's the spirit of the living God who loves you. It's God who loves you. He is making things so simple for you so that you may believe and be free. It's written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 56. The sting of death is sin. Oh, God's people, dead devil made a mistake. On the cross, tongue my savior, and he lost his tongue. I tell you, he went, Jesus went into the valley of death and he put the death to death. That's what happened. That's what happened. He is the Lord of life. So he entered for me into this place and God's people, he came out conqueror. There was no sin of his own. So father had the right to raise him up. If there will be one sin in my Savior, in Jesus Christ, in my Lord, one sin, he will stay there. If he would believe the devil when he appeared to him, when he came out of the 40 days fast in the wilderness, and he said, come on, this stone to become bread. Jesus said, I'm not here to perform miracle. My main purpose, of course, I did miracle. He, of course, he did mighty miracle. My main purpose is to do the will of my father. And the will of my father is that I only do what I'm told. I'm only doing what my... So listen to this verse. I'm, I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 26. The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. Many people who believe, of, of most of the religious people are stuck in law. Law has never saved anyone. Law simply brings condemnation. And I tell you in a religious circle, if you look, look very carefully, most of the people are condemned. They sin wholesale. They try to overcome sin. But I tell you, they're powerless. How do I know? I know because I had two boys. I raised them, and as soon as they were conscious, they sinned. I didn't teach them to be angry. I didn't teach them to be jealous. I didn't teach them to do all these things. But I was surprised that they started doing it straight away as soon as they could speak. Uh, sometime I speak to my little beautiful grandfather child, uh, Hadassah, and uh, I speak to her and uh, I say, would you speak to me? And if we are not in a good mood, she says, no. Why? Where did she learn this word, no? It was in her. And uh, since she is not happy, I say, will you speak to me? Or his dad says, speak to your grandchild, grandson, or, or, or granddaddy, I should say. And she says, no. Simple, no. 
Now listen to this very carefully, God's people. This is what happened. There are two laws, and I'm simply offering by the grace of God to the listener. Choose between these two laws. The power of sin is the law. The strength of sin is in the law. And uh, that's also very simple. Romans chapter 8, Paul writes by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he says here, I hope I'll be able to finish this, but message is too simple. It is very simple, God's people, and it's a good news. In the midst of all this uh, trouble, in the midst, midst of the reign of death in the whole world, you can live victoriously. Because uh, if you have committed your life to the Lord and Christ has come in you, the life has come to you. And God's people, even if you go, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Is it a bad deal? I don't think so. But I'm not suggesting you that you should be eager to leave. But it's not a bad deal. To be absent from the body is to be present. And Paul says, and he says, I have a hard choice to choose. He says, to live for me is Christ and die again. Oh, God's people, I'm telling you, please, 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 don't be eager to go. You have to live here to, to give glory to God. We need servants of the Lord, so don't be eager to go after hearing that death is no threat. To a child of God, death is no threat. Death is simply taking him to his eternal home. We are not the citizen of this world. The Bible says that you are the citizen of heaven. And if you go to your heavenly home, why should you be worried? Why should you be troubled? But I'm, I'm simply pleading with you, don't long to leave. Live for the glory of God. So because when a man, a child of God, dies, the spirit of Christ in him, or the life, or the divine life that has come with him, lives on. And in eternity, we will live by one life. And that is going to be the life of Christ. It is going to be union and communion with God based on life. Now, let's read it now. And the choice is between two laws. I'm going to mention here two laws. And uh, since our time is almost gone, you've got to pick up which law would you live by? Which law would be applied to you? It's a choice, God's people, and you can make a choice today. It's written here, there is therefore now no condemnation. Condemnation is always from the devil. Don't let him do it. Yes, if you have messed something up, come to the Lord, repent. And don't let, let the devil do some damage. Oh, he can do some damage? Of course he can. We were just talking about Peter and God speaks to him. The Lord speaks to him in uh, Luke chapter 22. He says to him, Simon, Simon, the devil has asked of you. Why? Why devil asked you? Because there is something in you that has to do with his stuff. It is his uh, material. And uh, somehow you have allowed this material to be in. You're going to be sifted. Sifting can come, God's people. Why should I be sifting? If I'm careful not to allow devil's stuff in me, but if I do allow the devil's stuff in me, I will be sifted. This is what the principle is. Jesus said, the devil comes to me and he looks around and he sees if anything of mine is there. It is written in chapter, I think chapter 14 of John verse 30. Uh, it, if you read it, you will see it. Jesus said, the prince of the air, our prince of this world comes and he looks around in me, but he doesn't find anything. If he cannot find anything, he cannot touch me. God's people, there's a very simple principle, but of course, to apply it will cost you alertness. To be alert, not allow the devil to throw anything at you or sow any seed that will grow and destroy you. 
There is therefore now, I'm reading from Roman chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It is a functional thing, God's people. To see it as positional is wrong. It's a wrong theology. It is walk. It is functional, not talk. Talk won't do. Choice has to be made. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, in Christ, the law of the spirit of life hath made me free from the law of sin and death. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free from what? From the law of sin and death. Sin and death brings it, brings sickness, bring quarrel, bring this, brings it separation in the family. Is the sin, law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Not sinful flesh, in the likeness. Must remember it. He was born sinless. There was no sin in him. Yes, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, then he prayed to the father thrice, Father, if it's possible, let it be taken away from me, this cup. But the Lord God Almighty in his own wisdom, silence spoke volume. And Jesus submitted, took the cup and drank it. From that time on, all the sin of the world was on him. He was committing himself to giving his life for everyone. That's why the word of God says in chapter uh, 5, I think, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 22 or 23, uh, or 121, you can check it out. He became sin. God, he, is written this way, he, that means Father, made him to be sin, Christ Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. He didn't become sinner. He became sin for us. On the cross, no sin of his own. He paid the penalty. We will pick up this subject. I tell you, it's a subject we cannot uh, say we have done away with it. We have finished this. No, sir. God's people, I've been speaking to you very clearly. Work has been done. Bible says the sinner's sin is not imputed to him anymore. All that sinner needs to do is to receive him, receive the provision that is made by the Lord. Let's pray God's people that many who have heard, they will have their hearts open and they will receive Christ gladly to establish his kingdom in them. Let's pray for that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we are free to make a choice between two laws. Lord, first of all, good news is that the law of the spirit of life in Christ makes me free from the law of sin and death. Lord, as we open up more next time and we understand more, we pray that People will be set free, made free from the law of sin and death because you have paid such a great price for sin that brings sickness and death, Lord God, and there's a freedom from eternal death in Christ. Everything. We give him the glory, give him the honor. We pray that many, after hearing this message, will receive Christ and what he has done on the cross to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise God.